Hello, everybody. How are you? It's Kevin Markwick here again on a Monday night on the mighty Uckfield FM. There's only one F in Uckfield, we always say. Ha ha. So good, Lord Lucan never left. And it's an hour of film music, as usual, for the moment. If that makes any sense at all. And tonight, with the huge leap of imagination, after having been doing trains and cars the past couple of weeks, I racked my brains and came up with the idea of boats. This, ladies and gentlemen, is why I get the big bucks. So sit back, loosen your bullets for an hour of rather good film music. And we're going to start, uh, oh, in Egypt on the mighty River Nile. Nina Rota's music for the Agatha Christie adaptation Death on the Nile in 1978. That film was huge for us in Uckfield. Um, after the very intense performance by Albert Finney in Murder on the Orient Express in 1974, Poirot was played with a much more comedic touch by the larger-than-life Peter Ustinov. With another big cast, including Betty Davis, Mia Farrow and David Niven, Audiences in the UK lapped it up, and although in the US it didn't perform quite as well as Orient Express, it was still considered a hit. It was directed by John Gilliman, a British director who'd gone to Hollywood and ended up directing great big films like um, The Towering Inferno and the 1976 remake of King Kong. Now, the great Ronnie Neem directed our next film. 
he was another director uh, from over here that was doing very well over there. Neem started his career as a cinematographer and screenwriter. Uh, he shot some of the greatest British pictures of all time, in which we serve this happy breed and blithe spirit for David Lean and photographed Powell and Pressburger's One of Our Aircraft is Missing. By 1969, he was directing Maggie Smith to her first Oscar in the prime of Miss Jean Brodie. So he doesn't seem quite the fit for the Poseidon adventure in 1972. It was one of the best disaster movies of the 70s, set aboard the capsized cruise ship SS Poseidon as our heroes, including Gene Hackman and Shelley Winters, fight their way to the bottom of the ship to get out, if you understand what I'm saying. Neem always said it was his favourite movie because it earned him enough to retire comfortably. The music is the first of our scores tonight by John Williams. John Williams' main theme for the Poseidon Adventure. You're listening to Kevin Markwick. It's Monday night on Uckfield FM, and we've got an hour of lovely film music for you. Uh, if you're out there, try and uh, get in touch or, you know, let me know what you're up to out there, what you're doing, what you think of the show, what you think we might do in the future, although I think we've only got a week or two left now. I'm going to have to leave you for August, I'm afraid. Um, but do get in touch at Kevin Markwick on Twitter. Or you can go to the Facebook page, uh, The Kevin Markwick Show. There are many, many ways to get in touch. And it would be great to hear from you, eventually. Uh, next up, another Stranded at Sea film, although uh, of quite a different kind. Ang Lee's Life of Pi in 2012 was based on the Booker Prize winning novel by Yan Martel. Told in flashback by the eponymous Pi, it's the story of a boy adrift on the ocean in a boat with just him and a Bengal tiger. It's a beautiful film and one of the rare examples of good 3D. God, I hate 3D. The conclusion, uh, actually, the film just made me cross. It's, well, I actually wanted to stand up and shout at the screen, what? Are you kidding me? But uh, the journey to that point is actually quite magical, as is the score by Mikhail Dana. Can he...
Mikhail Danner's beautiful score uh, for the beautiful Life of Pi. Off to the Napoleonic Wars now. And uh, unfortunately, we've been press ganged onto the crew of the Royal Navy Man of War HMS Surprise in Peter Weir's wonderful film, Master and Commander, Far Side of the World. A rollicking tale of naval heroics against the French off the coast of Brazil. Russell Crowe is perfect as Captain Jack Aubrey and a whole bunch of warrant officers and able seamen. Its sense of time and place is perfect and the sets, particularly the surprise itself, are highly detailed and accurate. If ever a film could have grown into a franchise, this is it. However, it didn't perform well enough at the box office. It's a shame. Um, Maybe Crowe should have worn his underwear over his breeches. I don't know. Uh, But it would have been great to see a sequel. This is a cue from the score by Ivor Davis called Into the Fog. May we remind you that for the convenience of those patrons who prefer not to smoke, seating areas on the right-hand side of this auditorium have been designated as no smoking areas. Your cooperation is appreciated. Catherine Grayson and Ava Gardner and a bunch of other people in a snippet of Can't Help Loving That Man of Mine uh, from the third screen adaptation of the Jerome Kern Oscar Hammerstein musical Showboat 
in 1951. Uh, this is Kevin Marquis. It's Monday night on Uckfield FM. I'm giving you an hour of lovely film music, uh, and I hope you're enjoying it. Do let me know. Um, I've said before, you can get in touch at Kevin Marquick on Twitter or on the Facebook page. Or, you know, I, I'm not difficult to find in this town, am I? Let's face it. Um, it's difficult to do a show about famous film boats without covering Jaws. It was the film that invented the summer blockbuster. You can decide for yourself whether that's a good or a bad thing. Uh, in those days, films were re released in the UK way behind the US. And we had to wait, actually, until Boxing Day 1975 to see it. So it wasn't the film that invented the summer blockbuster over here at all. Uh, however, it was still running in the summer of 1976 in a lot of cinemas, particularly those in holiday towns. Uh, this was before video, remember, and there was a, a minimum wait of three years for a film to come on the telly. My nan and granddad lived in Eastbourne, and I would go and stay with them quite often. Uh, I went to see Jaws at the ABC in Eastbourne every day for a week that summer. It was glorious. And actually, um, what is often forgotten is that the only way to re-experience a film outside the cinema at that time was to have the soundtrack album. I still have my much-loved copy of the vinyl album from 1975. Here's one of my favourite cues from John Williams' score, One Barrel Chase. One Barrel Chase from the soundtrack of Jaws in 1975 by uh, the ever-present John Williams. A famous flop now, uh, Mutiny on the Bounty in 1962 was the second time the story had been filmed. The first, with Clark Gable and Charles Lawton, was a big success and this version could well have 
been two, was it not, for the biggest star uh, of the film, Marlon Brando. The first director, the great Carol Reed, decided he couldn't put up with his antics, so he left the picture to re be replaced by Lewis Milestone, the veteran director of All Quiet on the Western Front, actually, in 1929. So he'd been around a while. Been round the block, as they say. Uh, even he couldn't get Brando to behave, taking charge of everything and deciding on a silly, foppish accent uh, for his version of Fletch Fletcher Christian. It was a wonking great expensive film to make, shot on location in Tahiti, and was the first film actually photographed in the super widescreen process Ultra Panavision 70. It was a financial and critical failure, which is a shame because it's a great story. Uh, David Lean was uh, setting one up just before he died. That's a film we'd like to see, uh, David Lean's version of Mutiny on the Bounty. It also ruined Brando's career for some time. Uh, he wouldn't be taken seriously again until The Godfather in the 1970s. The score is rather good, though, by uh, Bronislav Kappa. <laughs>
Overture from Mutiny on the Bounty in 1962. Uh, I'm assuming, I never saw it in the cinema, but I'm assuming that would have been the Overture played uh, in the roadshow version when, um, you know, the lights down, the curtains closed. Proper theatrical-like. The Old Man and the Sea now. Uh, not Spencer Tracy, but Robert Redford in All Is Lost in 2013. Directed by J.C. Chandor, who made a splash with his debut feature, Margin Call. Uh, All Is Lost tells the tale of a man stranded alone in the Indian Ocean, rather like Pi from earlier. Although this time, Redford doesn't even have a Bengal tiger to keep him company. It's a really gripping 105 minutes and a testament to the 76-year-old star power that he can carry a picture still, uh, especially one so obviously physically demanding. Um, it came out at the same time as Captain Phillips, if you remember that film, uh, the hijacked tanker film with Tom Hanks. And there's a scene uh, in All Is Lost where a tanker goes past and Redford can't get their attention and it doesn't spot him and it goes off into the distance. I always like the idea that it was Tom Hanks driving that. Yeah, wrong ocean, I know. <laughs> but it did have... Um, uh, it actually has a really interesting score by Alex Ebert. <laughs> Now it's 
it's time for ice cream. Or maybe some nuts. A cool glass of orange. Why not try a hot dog? Or the real thing, a cool, refreshing Coca-Cola. From the sales staff and in the foyer, now. Eric von Korngold's magnificent music for the magnificent privateer adventure The Seahawk in 1940, starring, of course, Errol Flynn at his swashbuckling best. You're listening to Kevin Marquick. It's Monday night on Uckfield FM, and this evening's film music theme is boats. Big boats, little boats, <laughs> all sorts of boats, rowboats, sailing boats. That's enough of the boats, Kev. There was a big old fuss back in 1992 during the 500th anniversary of Christopher Columbus's voyage to the Americas in 1492. The studio all announced big films, all with varying degrees of success. Uh, in the end, three were made. A uh, crappy one with Patrick Bergen. I can't remember what it was called. Um, let's all go to America or something. I don't know. Uh, the painful Carry On Columbus, an attempt to resurrect the Carry On um, I'm not going to call it franchise. We didn't call it franchises then. The Carry On series. Uh, and this great, big, expensive Ridley Scott-directed one called 1492, Conquest of Paradise. Gerard Depardieu plays Columbus. And my memory of it is that it wasn't a bad film. It looked great, but then Ridley Scott films always do. But it was another big flop. Maybe seafaring tales are not the best thing to sink your money into. Sink. You see what I did there? Thank you. Uh, what it did have going for it, however, though, was another great big score by Greek musical genius. No, not Demis Roussos or Nana Muscuri, but Vangelis. <laughs>
Van Gelis' score for 1492, The Conquest of Paradise, back in uh, 1992. We're going deep, deep under the sea now in James Cameron's The Abyss. Not sure the vessel quite counts as a boat. What's the definition of boat? Does it have to move to be a boat? Well, technically it does move at the end, so I'm going to allow it. The film's a load of old tosh, of course, but highly entertaining in that way James Cameron always seems to pull off. Uh, Love him or loathe him, he's a master storyteller. Set on a deep-sea drilling platform miles below the surface where the crew encounter strange alien goings-on while trying to survive a hurricane and some sort of plot to take nuclear warheads from a nearby sunken Soviet submarine. Oh, I don't know. It was quite complicated. It had really interesting effects, that kind of wobbly water effect that Cameron was rather pleased with that he used in T2 as well, didn't he? Kind of wobbly, moving through the air thing. Anyway, whatever. Uh, The score was by Alan Silvestri. Bud on the Ledge, a cue from Alan Silvestri's score from The Abyss, uh, James Cameron's film from 1989. Well, that is it, ladies and gentlemen. I can't believe it's all over. Um, it is, though. For I hope you've enjoyed the last hour of boat-based uh, entertainment. Do let me know if you have. Oh, I keep going on about that, don't I? Uh, I'll leave you with the last of our boat-based movies. And uh, it's the rather excellent The Cane Mutiny with Humphrey Bogart. Set during the Second World War, it features this top draw march from the great Max Steiner. So um, 
hopefully uh, I'll see you next time, next week on Uckfield FM and I'll leave you with this stirring stuff. Night, night. <laughs> <laughs>